Oh boy, you guys, the actual cursed day of runs here. I don't know what's going on. Actually cursed, man. No, if I if I don't if I don't finish the runs by the end of the year, the bet the bet the bet's basically off already. Like since I have to do the guide run through anyways. Like the bet is just not happening anymore. I will finish all these runs though. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna like stream extra like I would if the bet was still active. And balls are so OP. Well, I think it's because FromSoft doesn't really know how to balance stuff very well. Yeah, so at the start of November, I made a bet where if... So I had to do four, the 40 um, run requests before the end of the year. And if I didn't, then I had to do the God Run 3. So that was the bet. But then I had another incentive for God Run 3 with like a sponsored stream where if people just met a goal, then I would do the God Run 3. Because at the time... We had 35 runs done. I, I think it was 35 runs done by, like, um, I don't know, December, like, 13th or something. I don't know exactly the dates, but I was easily going to finish the bet. And so I gave people another chance to get the God Run 3 guaranteed. And so people did it. So now, now the, uh, I have to do the God Run 3 anyways. Because a lot of people wanted to see it, or want to see it. And so yeah, that's that's why now the bet is off, and uh, and I'm doing the God Run three. Yeah, people are saying I should have to do double God Run three, but obviously I'm <laughs> like I'm not gonna do that. Wow, that's pretty good, Vonto. Nice dude. God Run Trilogy? What does that mean? I can also let you know that why I am Carl. What's up, Barker? <laughs> Double God Run 3. Um, it, de it depends, TP. It could be a one-day thing, potentially. I don't think anybody, the two people who have done it so far definitely did not do it in one stream. Because their runs were, I think Bushido's run was, someone was saying it was around 13 hours. And then I think Dino's was, people were saying like 17. Mine will not be even close to that long, probably. I would just, I, I think my, when I do God Run 3, it'll be around 8. And so if, if I do it on the first attempt of a day, it could be one stream. But it doesn't have to be. I can play turning wood to aid you. You need her to the foot. I understand. Yes, I just said no to her by accident. I haven't done that in a while. Usually that happens when I'm resetting a lot and not really paying attention to what's happening. Then summon me. Ah, I bequeath. <laughs> Denied. It will sound horrid. It'd be cool if something actually happened if you said no. It's kind of... I don't know. It's stupid that you, you say no, and then you just have to say yes anyways, and like, why do they even give you a choice, dude? Makes no sense. Oh, it's 22 hours. Okay, yeah, so that's pretty long. But that's, is that, that's not all the in-game times added up, though. Like, that's kind of what I'm talking about. Um, in DS2, the Deprive class starts level one, yeah. Or whatever it's called. I don't know if it is deprived or not. Maybe it is wretch. Yeah, the games that you cannot actually do level one in is Bloodborne. The lowest is blood level four. And then in Sekiro, there's not actually a level one in the game. Like, it actually is really strange to me that when people do the god runs and stuff, that Sekiro is even in there. 
I was saying that yesterday because it's like, it's such a different game. Elden Ring is, is similar and Bloodborne is similar, right? To just Dark Souls. Sekiro is just totally different. Uh, it almost makes me wonder if people are going to like add armored core <laughs> into a god run or something. Because why Why not, right? No, I, I don't know if the game's actually similar at all, but... Who decided? I think the first person to do the god run 2 was... I assume Hob was probably the first person to start going for it, right? Hello? First person to actually do it, though. Who was the first person to do it? I can't remember. I, yeah, I assume Hob was the first person. Yeah, yeah, it was Dobby, but I think Hob was probably the first person to start going for it, I would assume. I've never played Armored Core. I, I have no idea about anything in, in the game. Or in the games. Less sense than Kingsfield. I've never played Kingsfield, so I don't know. But yeah, I I, I don't know. I, I guess it just depends on the logic of how you're adding the games into the multi-game runs. Because if you're just trying to do Souls games, then Sekiro is like very different. Yeah, that's that's for sure, Aram. I it, so the people who have done. Oh wait, has anybody done? I guess nobody's done the God Run Two, plus. Or, or God Run Three at at level one, right? So what would they, what would they do for Sekiro? Because I, I I. Would they just do attack power one, or would they do like? I don't know. That's the only thing that really makes sense, right? Even though it's not even close to the same thing. That's what I mean. It just the secure makes no sense in those multi-game runs, dude. Makes no fucking sense at all. Because there's no there's you can't even level up in that game. That's it, you guys. We're taking Sekiro out of the God Run 3. We're gonna do Elden Ring twice. How about that? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. How about, how, what if I did, dude, what if I did the Sekiro mod in Elden Ring? Because I'm pr pretty sure I've seen a mod for that. Surely that's fine, right? Wow, that was so close. What if somebody, what if somebody started the God Run 4? But yeah, what if they actually added Armored Core with the God Run 4? What would, what would people do? Because, yo, uh, Funk, thanks for the brand new Prime Sub. Appreciate it. What would, what would people do? Because would they recognize that as the official God Run 4 if somebody did it with Armored Core in it? Or like the new Armored Core, just whatever. I know there's a lot, yeah. 
or or would there be multiple God Run fours that don't include the same games or something? <laughs> I don't know. That's that's a, there's there's sort of a an official team hit list is supposed to be the official kind of no hit stuff for that. We decide all that stuff, but at the at the end of the day, it's all just down to what people want to do. Man, if people add the God Run, if, if people add uh, <laughs> Armored Core to God Run 4, I am, uh, I'm officially checked out of that at that point. That's already, that's insane. Well, yeah, it all started with the trilogy, right? It all started with Hobbs trilogy, which made a lot of sense to me. And then as, as more games got added, it's made less and less sense, in my opinion. Because, yeah, I mean, making it the Soulsborne games for the God Run, I think makes sense. You got Demon Souls, Bloodborne, and they're all very similar games, but... God Run 2 is where I, like, fully, basically checked out. I was like, ah, this is starting to not make as much sense now. I think Elden Ring's a... a I just, I, I feel like the games have to be similar for it to make sense. Unless, unless that's not really the goal, right? Which is totally fine. Because, yeah, you could just add whatever games you wanted into it, right? There's no, there's no reason why you couldn't just do, just no hit all your favorite games in a row. And, and just do that. So... I'm curious, though, if, if somebody eventually will do, um, like, let's say the God Run 2 or more, whatever, at level 1 no-hit, if they will do, like, attack power 1 or not. I guess probably. I just, I don't see what else you could possibly do. <laughs> Death Stranding 2. <laughs> the Tino Run 4. Yeah, I, I guess probably. Like, I, I don't know. I don't pay attention to Sekiro at all. But I believe it is. God run through Elder Scrolls games. I think that'd actually be really fun to do. I, I mean... I think that'd be pretty cool. I actually thought about that. When I was, when I was really bored of Souls games um, last year... I I did do some Skyrim runs and I was considering I was strongly considering trying to know like do a trilogy run of I guess it's not really a trilogy it's sort of I guess it is but like more wind to Skyrim just because those are the more like I actually haven't played any Elder Scrolls games older like I haven't played one or two but I don't see any reason why you couldn't just add one and two in there Yeah, people have done Breath of the Wild no hit. Yeah, I think it's actually a team hitless, like, official game. I'm not mistaken. Skyrim no damage is a thing that I have done. I don't know if I'm the first person to do it. I highly, highly doubt it. Um, maybe I was the first person to do, to do it on Legendary, but again, I just highly doubt that. Probably not. Maybe I was the first person to do, do Dawn, Dawn Guard, but maybe, maybe like 10 years ago, somebody did all this stuff and I just have no idea. So I, I, I have no idea, but I, all I know is that I've done a few no damage runs in the game. Obviously doing a no hit run in, in that game makes like no sense. 
It's like insecure, but I guess I don't know. Um, let's go here. No, Skyrim, Skyrim, no damage is not hard. But it's it's not it's not like a Dark Souls game where everything's very calculated for the most part. Where am I going? Right, when you're doing Dark Souls, you learn the boss's moveset, you dodge the attacks, and when you're running through the areas, you you know, you know what every enemy's gonna do. For the most part. But when you're running Skyrim, especially on legendary, it's a lot it's it's very random, right? You have to adapt to what's going on. And I think it's 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 actually really fun that it's like that. But you you just you have no idea what's gonna happen. You have to adapt to it, so it's it's really fun. It's really it's different. Yeah, that, that Jadar clip is insane. Yeah, so that, that clip I, I don't remember if that was on legendary or not. But basically, that's an enemy that's at the very first part of the dungeon. And the way Skyrim works is that when you when you enter into new areas, it's like a, it's a whole different map, right? It gets loaded in. But NPCs can potentially travel through them if they're aggroed to you. I, I'm not explaining this well at all, but what happened with that guy? He's the guy at the very start of the dungeon of like the Dwemer Ruin. And so you you exit that area into an into the next like level of the dungeon basically through a door, and so it's a, it's an entirely different you know dungeon segment that's loaded in, and the first one wasn't loaded in. Um, and so I went through that whole one, and then I went through another door to the next area, and somehow he was still aggroed <laughs> through the through the whole thing, and he teleported with me because that's what they can do. And then fucking instantly killed me in the next area, dude. That was so wild. I didn't explain that well, but it, I, I guess the VOD's gone. I should have highlighted that. But it's it's pretty hard to understand. And I think I think what why it happened is because when I initially routed through the area, I, I went through the normal way, but then I found a skip somewhere and I think he just stayed aggroed for a little bit too long when I went through the door no no the Skyrim no damage isn't it's still on my YouTube but just the uh, like that that clip the entire context of the clip is gone but yeah no the the actual no damage run's still there for sure yeah who knows you guys I I did say I told somebody a few months ago that I would do a more win no damage run so maybe we'll do that at some point I think I will. And then who knows? Maybe we'll do the, the Elder Scrolls trilogy. Like from Morrowind to Skyrim, no damage. And then do the Elder Scrolls God Run from 1 to 5. I mean, that'd actually be so much fun. But I also don't want to kill my channel right now. <laughs> but we, we can definitely do that, I think. Sometime this year, we'll go back. Or not this year, next year. This upcoming year. <laughs> I just yeah, I don't know how the, the how the older games work, like Arena and Daggerfall, but I've been meaning to play them. I just haven't really had time. I wonder if that run would get, like, not that it really matters, because I, I don't really do runs based on this, but I wonder if that run would get, like, a lot of attention if I did uh, Elder Scrolls from 1 to 5 no damage run, like, in the same way that the, like, Hobbs trilogy did. Because there's obviously, I think there's a lot more people who have played Elder Scrolls games than Dark Souls games, so maybe that would be just a gigantic run, dude. I don't know.
I've actually started to think about that a little bit now that I'm starting to like stream full time and stuff. But not. I, I don't do runs that I don't want to do. It's just never something I've done. Like I would never do a run that I don't want to do just because I think it'll get attention or something. But I want to do runs that are entertaining though. Gotta find the right balance. Yeah, the other run at the last boss. No, I think that'd be really cool. Doing Skyrim is, is a lot of fun. And of course, I would just do it on Novice, probably. But could do it on Legendary. I did do... The, the three Skyrim runs I did do were um, Novice, just like main quest, no damage, which was pretty... It was pretty easy, but it was also really fun to just play the game. Um, and then I did... I did no damage on Legendary for the main quest as well, which was a bit harder. But still... Like, lots of good strats to use on that. And then I did... I did Dawn Guard on Novice. No damage. So just the Dawn Guard quest line. Which was pretty fun. And there are a lot of cool strats you can do in the games. Because there's... There's... Everybody knows the Bethesda games are very... Um, they're obviously not perfectly made. So there's so many little out-of-bounds tricks you can use. To just cheese a boss or something like because the the final boss or the the second last boss in dawn guard is it's a huge mob fight and there's like a trillion mobs that come after you and uh and the way i did it was i i just like parkoured up onto this unreachable ledge and uh and there's actually supposed to be scripted damage there too which i which i completely avoided because i was in that spot and so it's i don't know it's, it's pretty cool that you can do that sort of thing. Yeah, we can we can definitely do it though. Like even just talking about it makes me excited, but I of course have to we'd have to do Morrowind and then Oblivion. We could just start with the with three games maybe. Why don't we do that then? Because I, I have so many runs already planned, you guys. I, I have an absurd amount of runs that I want to do. Especially now with the God Run 3. Which version of Skyrim? I guess just the... I don't know. Remaster? It, do, it doesn't really matter. I'm pretty sure when I did the no damage runs, it was on the remaster. Or when no damage is like 10 minutes. Could be. Unless, unless I actually did, you know, the entire main quest line, though, without that skip. But would that, I don't know if that'd be interesting or not. It might be really boring. Oh yeah, the special edition. Yeah, that's what I meant. I, I kind of forgot what it was actually what it was actually named. Not even the remaster. Well yeah, in Morwind there's um there's a skip with the I carry inflate scroll, or whatever it's called. Where you just jump into Red Mountain. And if you just go watch a speedrun, like the speedrun any percent is like six minutes long. Because you just run to that the, the guy who drops it. Right, he like falls from the sky. And then you just jump in. Like that's all that stuff is part of the reason why Morrowind is such a fun game. Is cause the game like there's levitation, you just have so much freedom in it. That you kinda miss out on in the newer ones. I find. Yeah, I think we've we've had some bad luck so far with this one. Which is the game where you can get the final boss to hit some villagers? I don't know.
I'm actually really excited for that, that now, dude. We're definitely we're gonna do it. I, I I'm I'm pretty set on doing that at this point, I think. There really are just a lot of runs I want to do though. I, I would also like to do Celeste, like no falls at some point. I think that'd be really cool. Um or just no no damage or whatever it is. I think that'd be cool. No death, Celeste. And then I, I've also been wanting to do Cuphead as well, but I don't I'm not in any rush to do it. Pretty low priority, I think. But definitely Celeste I would like to do. Oh, did they actually not get him back for Elder Scrolls 6? Is that confirmed that Jeremy Soul's not there? Man, that, that would be such a shame. If that's true. It'd be a huge shame. I think, it's poss I think it's possible to leave that there. What does that mean? Do a new Steam account, do all achievements. I, I for sure will do all achievements, no hit in this game, if that's what you're talking about, but you don't need to make a new Steam account. All you have to do is... Uh, there's a few ways to do it. You can do it in Steam console, resetting achievements, but I just, there's just like a program that you can use, Steam Achievement Manager. That's 100% a run we're going to do pretty soon. Yeah, I remember reading about that for looks. I, I don't... Um, I don't know if anything was confirmed, but... I do remember hearing about that, though. What's up, Ice Bear? Yeah, Hollow Knight 2, I've never played the game. So, I don't know. I, I do know it has a lot of really good challenge running potential and stuff. But yeah, I've never played it. I'm sure I will one day. And and I guess that the new one's coming out, right? Or something? Eventually. Is that copium? I, I don't know if it's official or not. <laughs> have, have they announced it and then it's just not a date or something? So probably be the last attempt today, guys, so it would kind of suck if we didn't make it anywhere. Or maybe one more after this. I don't know. We'll see. See how far we go. <clears throat> they said all games will release in next 12 months, and when was that? How long ago was that? I suspect over 12 months ago. Starfield no hit? Maybe. But I obviously wouldn't do no hit. I'd do no damage, of course, but. Hey, let me try the sleep pod. I, I don't know. I I mean, that didn't really look, seem to do anything, but. Oh, is this here? They did sleep, though. Oh, they're coming. There's still time. I'm sure that'll be a pretty big release when it comes out. I've literally never heard a single person say a bad thing about that game. Or even, even, a, an, uh, I've never heard anybody say a thing that was saying that the game was just okay or something.
no meaningful gameplay or adventure or story. I saw that somebody posted that copy pasta earlier. Actually true. Okay, just simply win. Dude, Red Wolf is no joke, man. As a wild boss. Yeah, no, Red Wolf, he's, I think he's really underrated, actually. It's just, I, I hate the arena. Ray monitor I have not I don't know I'm sure my heart rate would be the same as everybody else's most likely but I, I don't know yo Corp thanks for that brand new prime sub thanks so much dude I actually don't know I, I I don't know if my heart rate would be like high super high or not probably not I don't think it'd be too high. I don't know. <laughs> I actually have no idea. Depends on the run. Yeah, Z's this this spell can just DPS him down fast enough. It's insane. It just easily kills Elden Beast, and you don't even need the stun or something. really like runs like this where we go to sections that we would never normally go to. Ooh, I thought he aggroed there. That would have been not ideal. Just because when this guy aggroes, the guy up top aggroes. They have like a, a linked aggro. No, we don't actually need Gambit here. Spectators are more nervous than the player. Uh, it just depends. I, I actually don't think that's true. It, it could be true for certain people, but I've definitely heard of people saying like their hands get... I had no idea that guy could climb. <laughs> I've definitely heard people saying like their hands get numb and like all this crazy stuff that I'm sure no spectator. Well, maybe, I don't know. It just depends on the person.
Killed them yesterday? No, I, I, I didn't kill that guy yesterday. Like the... The spear guy. Oh, okay. We don't have the bow right now to aim. Oh, boy. Okay, I didn't think about this. No way. Oh my god, I cannot believe I just headshotted him. <laughs> I, I wonder if that's like some target, uh, auto target nonsense right there. At least Diego. Oh, <laughs> what a save. What a wild save. Okay. Now that how is that lucky, dude? That's pure skill right there. Pure skill zero luck right there. Let my hand. When I first played this game, did I ever get into temptation to check YouTube or internet about where to go next? Oh yeah, I, I totally did that. Yeah, like that's... Um... Like, I, I don't mind doing that. I know a lot of people don't want to, um... Like, spoil stuff for themselves, but I, I really don't care. About that sort of thing. I think it's better to... Um... I think it's better to just spoil yourself on the game and get tips on where to go than to just quit the game entirely because that's when I played when I played Dark Souls 3 that's what I did right I just quit the game halfway through and then I decided to come back to it eventually and I had a lot more fun when I was just searching stuff up so yeah I don't think there's anything wrong with that Especially in a game like this, you, you miss so much stuff if you don't. There's no possible way that somebody did a first playthrough and a first blind playthrough and found everything that they could. There's no way that happened. Is there a staff? Is, um, it's our, the staff that we use and it's also, um, it gives us cast speed. what we use it for. Unfortunate thing is that it is um, 52 faith or 52 intelligence requirement. It's pretty steep. But I think I didn't do it as much in Elden Ring, but as a result, I missed so much stuff. So... Um, so let's go... Where do we gotta go? Once you join Volcano, if you pick up the assassination quest, you might not be able to get Amba until you kill. That is correct, yeah. Oh wait, if you... Let me read the second part. 
if you don't pick up the quest to kill the first, you can get Gambit. It completely depends on... So, no, by if you just go to Volcano Manor and join it, then you can't just do that, as far as I'm aware. Um, you would have to kill a guy. But if you kill Rykard, then you don't have to do that quest, right? And the guy will just leave and open up his shop to you. I think if you if you don't kill Rykard, though, then you have to kill the first assassination guy. I could be wrong about that. And yeah, normally when I did like all boss and no hit and stuff, of course, since we're killing Rykard anyways, and, and with the Serpent Hunter any percent, um, you would just kill Rykard. And so you don't actually have to worry about all that other stuff. How's it going, Dame? Yeah, we're going for the run now, Kurt, but I've already lost several so far, so it's not looking great for getting this run today. Yeah, I saw it, Sower, but I, I... I don't really, um... I, it was just... It was 97% Elden Ring. It would have been lower than that, but... Would have been lower than that if I had um, played Dark Souls 3 online in Steam, and then also if I played Dark Souls 2 on this Steam account, but like, I play those games offline in Steam for obvious reasons, the NPC invasions and stuff, so... I actually have no idea why I had that equipped right there. This game I play online in Steam because it actually makes no difference at all. All right, so we got the medallions. Let's go here. No, he can't, Aziz. No, he's immune to stun when he's uh, in those animations. Which is why it's actually a bit harder than it could be when he, you know, when he gets to the end of the countdown. If you could just stun him out of that, it'd be so easy. No, no, he he doesn't take reduced poise damage. He just he actually can't be stunned. He just goes into the negatives. And so yeah, when he does that that um the countdown when he gets to like one or whatever and then starts the the knee hill or whatever. Um that whole sequence he can't be stunned at all. You got to get the stun before that. Well, it depends on your damage output, Aziz. It completely depends. If he's doing like three to one all in a row, I don't believe it is possible. Could be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure I'm not. I'm actually going to go here first. Yeah, I changed the... Yeah, I did... I updated the green screen, of course. 
the the snow background. That's, that's why I, would, I took such a long break from streaming, dude. Obviously. Hit millennia during waterfowl. Yeah. Yeah, I remember every every single time I did that, everyone was, <laughs> everybody would be so shocked, dude. I actually stopped doing that since the fast roll, but it's just because I, I haven't really fought Millennia that much with the new fast roll. Do a Soldier of Godric, or Soldier of God Rick run, like a cosplay. If someone requested, I will. Wonder uh, for the for the bingo league that's starting up pretty soon. I wonder if I should do specific practice for it, or I I, I don't know the format be, because obviously someone's gonna have to come up with all the uh, the challenges, right, or what whatever you call them. I forget the word for it, but someone's gonna have to come up with all of them. So I, but I don't. I just, I don't know if, um, what was I doing, by the way? I came here for what reason? I don't know why I came here. <laughs> I actually have no idea. It's so weird. Oh, 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 I was here for the, the tier. But yeah, yeah, like the, yeah, the tiles or whatever. It's not the word I'm thinking of, but. Um, yeah, I don't know if they're, they're going to be given to us like all way beforehand or. I think, I think it's probably better if they're not, but I, I don't know. I, I actually have not, there's been, like I'm in the discord with all the guys who are, you know, talking about it and I've not paid, I, I've not paid attention and I've not read anything that's been said yet. Like Domo and. And Aggie and Chris and stuff. We're all figuring stuff out. But I, I just I don't know. Be I my first instinct would be that if if they you know if everybody has a full list of the bingo challenges beforehand, then it'd be way too easy. Right, you just you'd know everything you have to do and you'd know the exact route of how to do the challenge. It's just a matter of basically um I assume you start a new character. Um it's a matter of getting a setup. But if if they're all completely unknown before each one, I don't know if that's actually even realistic with the bingo league, but if they're completely unknown going into it, then I think it's probably more interesting because then you gotta you have to rely on your game knowledge to be able to quickly come up with... Or, first of all, you have to know where something is. Or whatever the objective is, you have to know how to do it. But then you have to, like, quickly figure out the best route to do it with what you have. But, yeah, I, I'm really just... I'm not sure what their plan is at this point. And I haven't... I know they do bingo runs a lot. Um, so they probably have a huge list of challenges already planned out. Uh, maybe... Oh, they have a thousand plus tasks. Oh, okay, so that would be really good. Or a hundred plus, okay. That's not as good, but... If it's like that, then that's really good. If, if it's an amount of, of objectives that is too large for somebody to know all of them, or just, like, learn all of them quickly... And that's probably good. And and when they do bingo, like you just do a line, right? It's not complete the whole board. Because I've done some bingo challenges in the past where I had to actually complete everything, so it wasn't really a bingo. <laughs> I 
<laughs> yeah, you do lines too. Of course you do. I do think I'll be at a pretty big disadvantage for that just because I haven't done any bingo challenges with them before. Whereas I think they they do bingo races like all the time. So. <laughs> I'm sure I, I'll, I'll catch up on it eventually and I'll give some of my ideas, but. Yeah, we'll see. Obviously, I didn't do the quest line. Multiple format, single line, blackout, and lockout. Oh, interesting. Okay. So if someone completes one challenge, then the other person can't do it. That's pretty, that's a nice idea, but yeah, I'll, I'll just have to read up on what they do for that. So you, if you, let's say I knew what the other person was doing, I could, like say I knew they were going for a certain line. I could do one of them that they haven't done yet in that line and then like block them out from doing it, right? And that gets kind of complicated. So yeah, I guess speed is a big part of that then. Uh, well, obviously speed would be... I, I assume it's just a speed running... Uh, tournament or t speed running league kind of you can definitely make it a no hit league as well but i don't think that's what it'll be Yeah, I guess if you just, if you really wanted to like try hard at it, you would just, you would get the entire list of things and then figure it out 100% and practice the routes of, of doing whatever the objective is. All right. So let's say, I don't know. I, I, I don't know any examples of what they've done, but let's say you had kill. Kill all the dragon bosses, right? That's something that you could in your head go, okay, so, you know, we've got. I know where all the dragon bosses are, first of all. I, I doubt that'd be a challenge, but it was it, it was a challenge on one of the bingo things that I did one time with uh, Eliza. But yeah, you got to know where all of them are, know the fastest ways to get there based on, I guess, what graces, whatever graces you would have by that point. I guess, I guess it just comes down to knowing the boss's movesets well enough so that you're not going to die, which I don't think I would have any issues with, but then, yeah, and I obviously know where they all are, so... It's stuff like that. I guess you can just look at the list for most of them and, and kind of determine if you're good on that or not. And then if you're not good, then you just practice it. Kill any remembrance boss with dagger. Oh, interesting. Okay. So they have challenges like that. Does that mean that you have to like actually go and upgrade a dagger and stuff? Because that's that's pretty cool. Good idea. Yeah, so you'd have to at that point know what the best in class is and then I shouldn't have healed again I don't know why I did that yeah you'd have to know the best in class for whatever weapon or whatever it is know where to get it know what it upgrades with and all that stuff and then Oh, wait, there's not a single square post lane Dell. Yeah, I guess the matches could be too long, right? If that was the case. That's kind of unfortunate, but it also makes sense. I 
I'll just have to look at all the challenges. We'll look at them eventually and see what they all are. Like, this is all already established, I assume, then. Don't see a problem. Oh, uh, wait, what do you... Don't see a problem with what? Oh, for the chat? I actually do think that is a problem. In my opinion. I, I think that would be a problem. Because I remember when we did the bingo challenges the, the other time with Eliza, like, I had such a big advantage because people in my chat know what the hell is going on in this game. Hey, what the hell is... What the hell is going on here? No, I think... I think people were... I, I remember somebody saying something about, like, emote only mode in chat and stuff. How am I so bad, dude? What's going on here? No, I actually think that's a good idea. I, I do think that, you know, having the other person stream up is probably... Like a, 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 that should be a fair play, because you, you really cannot... You cannot actually stop somebody from doing that. Yeah, what I, I mean, in, in a perfect world, I, I really do like the idea, though, of, you know, a list of challenges that somebody else comes up with that nobody participating has seen, and then you have to do it on the fly. I, I, I think that's better, but if it's not realistic, then it's not realistic, right? But I, maybe even just having... Having that as a possibility when somebody comes into a, like a match with somebody else, the possibility of them not knowing what the possible challenges are is like an extra thing, right? But I guess that already kind of happens if there's a set list. It's just, it's not, I don't think it's quite the same. But no, I'm very curious to look at the, the list of stuff, though. See what kind of challenges there are. Is there, like, some link to some... I don't know. Some document for that? I'm just thinking, though, like, if... If they've done bingo a lot and it's still the same set of 100, then they must have done every challenge by now, right? I think that's probably a little bit less interesting. I did not mean to split the avatar right there. I don't know what I was doing. I, I, I meant to have a volcano split there. Let me add that in. Here we go. Yeah, well, when I, you know, oh boy, minus 4,000. <laughs> when I look at the, um, when I look at the list of stuff, or when and when I look back on the conversations in the Discord about the rules for that stuff, then I'll, like, maybe I'll have some.
Maybe I'll have some ideas, you know? I think I think I have some pretty good ideas. Maybe that's just because they're mine, but... When it came to Amit, at least, I think I had some pretty decent ideas for, for stuff. Uh, so how much intelligence do we need? I think we only need 36, right? And we get to 42, and then 52. So... We start investing in anything else right now? Or just more intelligence? I'll just get some decent amount, because we have the crown now, right? So now, I think 43, and this is 52. So we've got the intelligence tier, gotta put in. With that one for now. Oh, I need to go get Gambit now. Yeah, it's too bad I can't watch any of the bingo stuff because they also do it way too late. <laughs> like, I would participate in them. They've asked me to participate, but it's just too late, dude. Usually end stream by the time they start. And I, I did do one of the rando races with them, which was really fun. But I was up, up until like 3 o'clock. 3 a.m. So it's, it's actually a problem, dude. That's This is how the, the EU people feel. I guess. That's what I get. Okay, let's um let's go here. Yeah, and that, I'm actually, speaking of that sort of thing, I'm going to start streaming, um, I don't know when, like, I'm not going to make any promises on when, but at some point in the future, I will start streaming earlier than 11, 11 p.m. or 11 a.m. my time for EST. At some point, I'll probably start streaming at around 9 a.m. my time, so for, like, EU people, it should be better, I would assume. But I think I'm, I, I think my schedule is already decent for most people. Yeah, I'm just not sure when. Maybe maybe in the summer. So not for a while. Assuming I'm still full-time streaming by that point as well, but <laughs> Yeah, it'll it'll be even a little bit earlier, I think. Just cuz it, it's just based around what makes the most sense for me, right? And at this point I um I like sleeping in a little bit and having time to like work out in the morning and stuff. Yo, Kurt, thanks for the 10 gifted subs, dude. Insane. Thanks so much, Kurt. Appreciate it, dude. Okay, I'm gonna take this fucking stupid helmet off so I can see what the hell's going on here. Last time I missed that firebomb throw because of it. Yeah, make sure if you got a sub from Kurt, make sure you thank them. Thanks so much again, dude. Uh, before full-time streaming, I, w I did uh, software development. And uh, I've been streaming for a long time. I've been streaming for over five years now. But a couple months ago was the first time I actually like started full-time streaming. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been really... Like, I'm very fortunate be able to do it at this point but yeah i think it's it's been good because i i never i never had the the like plan or even the desire to go full-time streaming until pretty recently and i think if i wanted to go full-time streaming that entire five years like if that was my goal then i probably would have been burnt out a long time ago Okay, here we go. Oh. 
Why can't I wield the staff? Close. Why can't I wield the goddamn staff, dude? Oh, the helmet. Oh, thank you. I, I, I totally forgot the helmet, dude. That was pretty funny. Stupid fucking helmet. Okay, so let's kill this death bird. Hopefully I don't die here. That would kind of suck. So medium rolling, it's not ideal. Ah, okay, there we go. Yeah, I don't really want to be mid rolling on uh, on a death bird. Nice one. not ideal. We did it. The, the, actually, the most dangerous part of that fight is just mo accidentally moving too close to that, like, octopus squid thing. Okay, are we are we finally done the setup, dude? I think so. I think we're finally done the setup. Do I need anything else? I don't think so. Yeah, we're plus 9. Yeah, actually this setup isn't this setup isn't really that bad, to be honest. We do still have to go kill Duo Crystallion though. Add some extra time. But there's been several runs that were way longer than this. The sorcery only run was probably an hour and 40 minutes before we started doing anything.
I just, I, I could have done more than that on the opening. Like, you can actually just script market with this, but I didn't really want to, uh, want to, um, do anything stupid, so. Um, I'm gonna swap to this staff for now. Just because I do have to kill somebody. I guess I, I could use Red Feather for Godric, but it's just so unnecessary. But I could. I make those impossibly long foot jumps on rooftops? Um, I don't know what you mean by that. Like, is, is, do you have an example of what jump you're talking about? Yeah, if you're sprinting and you jump, you go further, right? Um, so maybe that's it or maybe you're just not timing where you jump from effectively because you can actually in, in in the games where you can jump so Sekiro and Elden Ring you can actually jump when you're off of the ledge like, so you can run off the ledge and then sort of jump And so you can get extra distance. There's a lot of skips in Sekiro that are based around that. Light load goes further. I actually, I think the jumps are the same distance no matter what your weight is. I, I could be wrong about that, but fairly certain medium and light roll jumps are the same. Not sure about fat roll. I'm sure fat roll is probably the same too. We can actually use red feather here, you guys. I'm going to. I'm already low HP. But yeah, also, you could be talking about something with successive jumps. And um, there's a thing in this game. So if you jump when you're sprinting, and then if I'm sprinting again and try to jump... Okay, well. If you, do, if you don't wait long enough, then you won't get as far distance. Um, but you can negate that by blocking. So like, so say I jump here, and then I sprint. And then see that jump? I just I didn't go nearly as far. If I do the same thing, but block, I get the full distance. So maybe that's what you're talking about as well. Pretty sure I'm light rolling. Actually, I'm probably not light rolling. I just need to be a bit careful here. Yeah, it's because of the strength requirement. It, if I don't wield it effectively, the spell will do the same damage, but it'll take more stamina. So that's why I do that. Two ending it doesn't actually do anything else. Alright, there we go.
weapon had the shortest setup time. Any smithing stone weapon has the fastest setup time. So, like, iron balls. Or, um... Uh, what was the... The cane sword we cheated in at the start of the game. And that's also a smithing stone weapon, so that one was very quick as well. Yeah, we kill Redan to get into the capital. Yeah, no problem, uh, Japan. I'm definitely going to cheat in Marcus Hammer, yeah. Either that or I do it on NG+. Plus. I guess I could do it on NG+. Plus if people wanted me to. Just to make things a bit different? I don't know. Yeah, the final cutscene with the hammer. Yeah. Yeah, how about... Uh, we could have, like, a, a, a poll. Or what, what do you guys prefer? For the Marcus Hammer run, which is obviously you obtain it from the Elden Remembrance, which is the final boss. Would you guys rather us do it on NG Plus? Or uh, base NG when we just cheated in? Like, so NG or NG Plus? And on NG Plus, we would start out with levels. We would start out with a max upgrade hammer. The talismans that we need, all that stuff. Okay, I think most people are saying NG, which is what we usually do, so. I, I honestly don't care either way, just because we've um, we've already done a lot of runs on, on base NG. Would I know hit first NG? I would not. No, I would I would just just start out on NG plus with the save file. Can we actually get a pull for it? I I think most people are saying NG, but I'd be interested to see the split. Let's go on Kazoodle. Yeah, we're doing the God Run 3, dude. NG plus does change your amount of poise damage that you deal. Man, we could use Howl now, I'm realizing. We can already use Howl. That's pretty insane. Let's go. Let's just do it. Let's go ahead and get the... I did get this grace. Yeah, with Howl... So it's 33 faith, right? But there's so many boosting things that you can get in the game. One thing I really like about this game, you can boost your stats so much that we only need 12... Or sorry, 13. Did I get to 13 or 12? Okay, we, we need 13, but you can get to 13 faith and get to 33 with the, the talisman, two finger heirloom, which is the talisman I meant. Godric Drake Rune is an, an additional five, and then the faith tier is an additional 10. So just like that, you got 20 stats and then get to 33. I guess we could we could do NG plus seven as well. I'd rather not. But we definitely could do that. Oh, that's actually a really good point. Like fires, I'll have to check. I guess I just won't. But it's okay. We need we needed to get this anyways. That's a good point. After Redan, though, we should easily be able to, to do it. Yeah, we, we wouldn't even be close, I guess. That's okay. We'll just go with this for now.
it even doable at this point? Oh yeah, easily. I mean, if I streamed every day until the end of the year, I would easily be able to do this many runs. I mean, when we were going for this bet, there were, I think, three days, three separate days where I got more. I got three runs in in a single day. So, I, and, and I, we've only got three runs left, and there's still like four days remain or three days remaining. So, but I'm also like because the bet isn't is off at this point, I'm not gonna stream on days where I wouldn't normally stream. So I'm not like New Year's. I'm not gonna stream, for example. Uh, what am I doing here? We're fighting the boss. I need the crown. Yeah, at this point, I'm I'm pretty confident in how quickly I can get runs in this game. Oh. I should have gotten the grace down here to get to Redan. I actually just didn't think about that at all. Man, that's so which way is faster now? <laughs> I don't know. I don't actually know. Yeah, this poll might not mean anything. If if Kyra already said NG, then <laughs> that's basically NG. What's the... I guess maybe Aeroth is faster? I, I don't know. I messed up. Is that Moyaba? No, I think... No, it's supposed to be Radon, but I say Radan because I don't care. Well, maybe the poll will be NG, and then it, it'll be fine. <laughs> well, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe we'll do two in a row. How about that? I'm just kidding. I won't do that. The, the weapon will not be cool enough to do two in a row. Yeah, at least it wasn't bits. Uh, that, maybe that would have been a little bit more of an issue. Because you can do you can do polls with bits, I'm pretty sure, or something like votes with bits. <laughs> yeah, actually scammed. Oh, we did OX. Yeah, we just we just finished it. That was the last run I did, which will go on YouTube eventually. <laughs> Gino scammy, you know, dude strikes again. Yeah, the weapon, it's going to be a, a bad weapon. I, I'm already prepared for that. I just hope it's not as bad as the Halo Scythe. There's no way it can be. Dude, what were the... Oh, shit. What were the votes for it? I got to pay attention here. I just ran into a crowd of enemies. Was it 394 to 394? Okay, we can just refund Aram of his points, or we can refund anybody... Who spent points on that? How about that? We could get the pot from this guy, I guess. And how's that 50% then? Why why did it say 50% if it's not actually 50%? Oh, it's because of the, the points? Maybe? Well no, we could just like give you points. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, PP Cream spent like fucking 9 trillion points, of course. 999 trillion points, obviously.
<laughs> the king of Canada, dude. Uh, Jake, thanks for the four month reset, dude. Welcome back. I don't live in Canada, though. Well, I'm close, but I don't live there. Yeah, welcome back, dude. Definitely been out there a good number of times for hockey and Suns games and stuff. The bits pulls? I I don't know. Maybe. Champions, welcome. Yeah, Elden Lord is loaded on points, dude. You love to see it. I use a Xbox One controller. Like nothing special. Hey, we're light load right now. I guess because the Godricks. Oh. Wait, I can use Howl, you guys. Because we're at we're at fifty. Oh. And I forgot about Godricks. Okay, well, let's go back. I want to see this damage with Howl. Yeah, the green screen is, is pretty uh, advanced. I paid a lot of money for it. So yeah, we gotta put the uh, faith one in. Yeah, it's no hit. Yeah, we're doing no hit. And I guess it's also no deaths at the same time. If we die, it's a ounce a hit. Yeah, best, best green screen on Twitch. Unless, of course, the death is required, like at the start. Well, I think Marcus Hammer, it um, won't be the worst holy weapon I've used for this bet, but I, I'm pretty certain it's going to be not good. But it'll be good. It'll be okay just because it's a hammer, and hammers are not bad. But yeah, holy damage is, is not good. And if it's got a useless Ash of War, which it sounds like it does, that's also not great. How's our setup looking here? Uh, the God Run 3 will probably be um, early next year. We got the Faith tier, Magic tier. Got to swap this out as well. I can't remember if that was actually higher or lower damage than last time we did it. RTSR is just, there's no point in most cases, right? It just takes long to set up. I actually very rarely use Red Feather on these runs unless it's absolutely required. Okay, so now let's get Glimp Blade. We need Glimp Blade. Please, the name's Roger. Now I'm in. I had a little as you might guess. 
Oh, I'm privy to what you care to learn. Time can move a little conversation. Ah, well, now the spell well, speed so is the same. Like we've got the exact same setup. I think our, our damage was just a bit lower per hit just because of the, the intelligence tier. And, and that's probably it. But actually, that wouldn't be enough to make it lower damage. It was probably higher damage. I just don't remember what we were getting. I'd love to get some more endurance, but we don't really need it here. Let's just get intelligence. Okay, so... I should have the, um... We got the stone swords. Good. We need Beast Torch and we need Gambit. So we're killing the Crystallians for um, our uh, Terra Magica. Which you wouldn't, I, I mean, maybe you would expect there's the few spots, but at first I kind of didn't think it would be that useful. I considered it. But it seems to be the ticket for Gideon. And then we could also use it on Elden Beast. We can use it on some other stuff as well. Um, I need to swap to what? This one. Surely these guys aren't pathing in here yet, right? That'd be really bad. Oh, he actually was. Oh, I guess he walks pretty far. Okay. So... This is it the right setup, I think? Very satisfying using glint blades on on that boss. I don't know why it just it is. That's a really magic resistant boss as well. But I don't know if they just like lose all of their resistances once they get stunned, or I, I don't know how it works exactly. What's up, Casey? Wonder if a similar sort of strategy would work on the trio Crystallian with low damage like this. If you could actually isolate them. Uh, it does on you, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's actually really stupid. I, I wish it didn't work like that. But it's worked like that since the beginning of of Souls games, basically. I, I just, it's kind of dumb. Be able to get the rapier, but just clone the Ash of War? Um, I guess so, yeah. But why, why would you even have to do that? You could easily wield this thing on R01. Oh, oh, you're saying because... Oh, oh, never mind. You're saying because it's upgraded. Um. 
Mm, that's actually... That's a good point. Never even thought about that. Because what happens when you pick up... So the way... the way So there's a... There's a, a I guess like a stat in, in these games that determines your max upgrade level. Um... And, and that's set, so in this game, when you pick up an item that's upgraded, your max upgrade level, and it's mainly used for PvP. Just for matchmaking purposes, of course, because the way it works is like, it'll match people that have similar max upgrade levels. But when you pick up a new item, that max upgrade level goes up. And so when people did, in, in Dark Souls 3, it didn't really matter. There were items that you could pick up that were upgraded, but... Um, if you pick up a twinkling scale weapon or a scale weapon or a twinkling weapon, it would still be at plus zero. But in Dark Souls 1, it was actually different. If you picked up a weapon like the Black Knight Halberd, your max upgrade level would immediately go to plus five. And so when people do R1 plus zero in Dark Souls 1, basically you can do anything except level your character or increase your max upgrade level. And so in this game, if I pick up Roger's Rapier, my... Um, Max upgrade level goes to plus eight. So I guess that probably wouldn't be allowed. But it's sort of a stupid... That, that's just how they did it in Dark Souls 1. It doesn't necessarily mean that that's how it has to be. Because yeah, if you're not even using the weapon, you just discard it or something, then I don't really see an issue. If you're just putting it on a plus zero weapon. I'm just gonna grab this in case something happens, I guess, but I just realized we're not even cheesing the sentinel, so. Doesn't even matter. I I don't know for sure, Ramiri, but I assume if it works like it did does in Dark Souls 3, then you don't need the stats for it. It's pretty safe to assume that most things in this game work the same as Dark Souls 3. So this will be interesting on the Sentinel. We'll have Terra Magica and Howl on him. Last time, I didn't use either of those things, and it still blasted them, so. Delayed roll. People say that. I actually don't understand what they're talking about. I've heard people say that they think the rolls are delayed in this game. I just, I have no idea what that means. Oh, the startup frames. Oh yeah, okay. If that, if that is what you're talking about then. I, I don't know if the rolls in the earlier games had startup frames, but. Magic tier? I'm using the magic tier in the faith not tier so that I can cast Howl. Okay, I believe if I stand right against this gate, if I use Howl, he shouldn't aggro. Learn that from the... I didn't actually expect him to aggro there when I casted that, but... Does it matter? Early games reacted to button press. Is that... That's not true. Is that true? There's no way. I'm pretty sure that's not true.
Because think about it. If you can sprint in those games by pressing B down. Am I just like totally insane and I didn't notice that the whole time? I'm pretty sure it's not. <laughs> I don't know. I do have like a lot of hours and at least Dark Souls 2. Oh, if you're locked on. Really? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that's true either, but I'm like fairly certain that that's not true. I could be wrong. I don't know. Yeah, I, yeah, locking on a DS1 is definitely like the worst idea of all time. But I don't know. I've, I guess I I don't know if I've ever locked on in Dark Souls 1 before. I know in Bloodborne you can't in Bloodborne you can't sprint when you're locked on, right? Or something. So maybe Dark Souls 1's the same. I I don't know. I I <laughs> like I actually have no idea. I don't pay attention to that sort of stuff cuz everything feels the same to me, so I'm pretty sure DS2 is not like that, though. But again, like, when do I ever lock on in DS2? I guess I do sometimes. But yeah, I've, I've, I have heard people say that. And if they're talking about startup frames, I, I don't know. I know in this game, so there's some, yeah, there's like a... I don't know if there's like an actual term that we use for it, but... Yeah, on the first couple frames of a roll, you can still get hit after you let go of B. And you know what happens when you get stamina consumption, but no roll? Um, I don't, I don't think it's ever happened to me in DS1 or DS2. I mean, I've, I haven't played DS1 enough for that to have happened to me. So it is possible there's no startup frames. Maybe that's what people are talking about, but I highly doubt it. Cause that's not something that you just, like most people just would not notice that. Unless you're recording your gameplay and then watching it over. Because even even when I'm playing games, like, I remember I've I've definitely had runs in Elden Ring end to that, that sort of thing where I, I let go of B, but like on this boss, actually, I remember it's probably the last time it happened. And I, I've played these games for like thousands of hours, right? I don't even notice it happens when it happens, usually. I, I can tell that my roll is close, but usually I think I just roll late. Well, which it is a late roll. But usually it's not until after I look at it that I realize like, oh, I, you know, I let go of B and then I got the stamina consumed, but the iframes hadn't started up yet. I don't think just like people are rent are playing the games and just noticing that stuff. Oh, oh, are you, you're talking about, um, are you talking about the, the stored rolls or something? Where if you, you queue up a roll, but you get hit, and then your roll comes out after you get hit? Is that what you're talking about? Oh, that's not what you're talking about. Okay. I remember searching up on my first DS3 playthrough how to prevent that from happening. <laughs> like, I thought it was I thought it was like a setting or something. I, I, I was fighting Dancer, I remember, and that just kept happening to me. I would roll too late, and then I would get hit, and then the roll would come out after because it's queued up. And I was just like, man, how do I turn this off? Because you just get roll caught after. It's so annoying. But I don't know. I, I actually don't know what you're talking about, Teal. But I, I've heard other people say the same thing. So I, I don't know. And I've obviously, I've been playing DS2 a lot recently, right? We did a lot of the runs on it. I've never noticed anything like that. So maybe I'm just not as perceptive to that stuff, but I, I just, I don't see. I've never noticed it. Yeah, DS1 stored rolls are, are the worst by far. Like 
it's so bad. You can you can hit the ground and then roll a good five seconds later, man. Maybe not that much, but I've had some pretty insane stored rolls. All right, here we go. Imagine the boss ever following up the combo, dude. Like, delay on the rolls. I... <laughs> I don't know, man. Jump at low enough stamina. Yeah, that's how, that's how those, um, like, zero stamina swaps work is based on the input queuing and so I, I think it works in this game as well but in Dark Souls 3 basically you could give an action at zero stamina and then like swap like say an action like a, a weapon art or something and then swap to something else and then it'll have like a, a different weapon art zero startup frames for rolls well, that's just not true. Or, or, well, for rolls, but... Yeah, if you're talking about for rolls, but... For iframes, that's not true. Yeah, maybe for the roll animation. I... I, I don't think there is any startup. Uh, Jay Stan. Thanks for the uh, good luck, dude. Have a good rest of your day or night. I, I don't know which one I like more, actually, Archer. I, I like that sorceries feel... I don't know. I, I like them both a lot. I really like them both a lot. Oh, yeah. It's going to keep slowly leveling up endurance. So Morgoth, we just spam him down. I don't think it was very complicated. We, we have just extra damage from Howl here, too, so... What is the final spell slot and uh, or the final ring slot, you guys? Did I like forget a talisman somewhere? <laughs> uh, ritual sword, radagons, and then heirloom. Where do, where do I get the last talisman that we use? And what even is it? Oh, dude, it's the red wolf. Oh my god, I totally forgot about that. I guess we can go get it. <laughs> I just totally forgot about it, dude. But it, I mean, it actually is just almost nothing, but... Yeah, the insane 4%. Might as well get it, right? I've got a just totally free talisman slot. <laughs> yeah, surely Morgoth could spawn his swords with our extra 25% damage that we have on this run compared to the routing. Surely. Okay. 
<clears throat> we're still light load too, which is good. Uh, yeah, this is carry and slicer build. That's why we're using like incantations and stuff. We did finish sorcery only. And it, the run's actually up on YouTube if people missed it. I think Matt added a command, exclamation mark new vid or something. Morgoth sword? I have not done that. Is it actually any good? Morgoth sword? Yo, uh, Hald, thanks for the brand new Prime sub. Thanks so much, dude. Oh, same tiers. Bloodhound thanks. So that's decent then, right? I mean, Bloodhound Fang is pretty good. So, yeah, the, the run requests are based on... So, you can request them with channel points. And actually, after this bet... So, right now, they're closed. But normally it's 150,000 channel points for a run request and, you know, it's it's pretty expensive just because I don't want to be doing these runs, like, <laughs> all the time. Even though 40 have been built up over the last while. Uh, but yeah, that's how you request it. And so once you get your hands on 150k points, you can request one. I'm going to add more options, though. So I think we're going to do... When I open them back up, 300,000 is going to be a, a gr all great runes no-hit run with a build of your choice. And then I think I'll put all remembrances at like a 400K. And then I'll also, there's also a casual run request that you can do, which is 75K. And I'll, I'll put up maybe like a, I mean, maybe a one, I go 110,000 for all great runes and then 150 for all remembrances casual, something like that. We also could, yeah, we could do an all bosses um, casual for for how much? Maybe, maybe 300 is good for that. But yeah, so when you're requesting the runs, though, I like I, I have the final say of what I'm going to do. I'm not going to do something if it's stupid. So. Especially for the no hit. For the Just the casual stuff, I'm, I'm definitely more open to doing stuff. But it's like a fist no hit run. Like, obviously, I'm not going to do that. Or fist only no hit. Well, bow only, I, I'm actually going to do bow only anyways. So yeah, people did request consumable only no hit and bow only no hit, but the thing with those, oh, the thing was with those is that I, I'm already kind of planning on doing them and I didn't really want to include them in the bet as they would either take too long or I didn't want to have to rush through those runs. So that's, that's what happened with those runs. But yeah, certain runs I... If I don't want to do it, I won't do it. And you, you could either get refunded or pick something else. All boss and no hit. Kick. Oh, no hit, only kick. Yeah, surely a million's enough for that. Um, I don't... We've, I've never done it before where people had to donate to request a run, but I guess I could. I don't think I should do that, though. I, I, I remember there was... We were, somebody mentioned that before, and there was some reason that I don't remember why. I don't think it was a good idea. Oh, I think it's just because... Yeah, I think the reason was because I... Like if, if there's a run that I don't want to do and somebody paid for it, then it gets a little dicey, right? I think that was the reason. Oh.
Pretty sure that was the reason. But during the subathon, I did do like paid requests for builds, but it wasn't no hit or anything. In kicked millennia to death. It only took three, four hours. He really did that. That's pretty impressive. What is this insane branch right here? When did he do that? He's going insane with the meme challenge runs, dude. Oh. I mean, max level, though, still. Well, yeah, so, yeah, kicks, kicks scale with your weapon, right? So you can actually get some pretty reasonable damage on it. Yeah, you see, it ain't chasing the the high clout runs, dude. Yo, Denz, thanks for the six point nine dollars, dude. Thanks so much, dude. Yeah, 88 is not too bad. When we do, when I do Fist, which I, I actually plan on doing Fist Millennia pretty soon, probably going to get like less than 10, man. It's going to be really bad. But she's got a lot of resistance, right? Oh, yeah, no, well, it completely depends on the boss. I mean, there were certain instances of getting... I think on Fire Giant, we are getting upwards to 18 damage. But a boss like Millennia, it's not like she has a weak point, and... It's got a lot of resistance, so... Yeah, there's a there's a lot of runs I want to do next year. I'll just start so just for normal Elden Ring runs, all achievements no hit in this game, and then I want to do consumable only no hit. Those are two pretty high priority. Of course, we're going to be doing the God Run three. Um, and I was also talking about like other games too. It would be cool to do Morrowind to no damage, and then eventually Oblivion into some sort of trilogy run with more wind up to Skyrim, no damage, and then maybe even more than that. Maybe I'll do that. What's up, Lazy? Welcome back. Yeah, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of runs that I want to do, I think. Yeah, and then RL1, no upgrade, probably all bosses at some point, potentially. Oh, only 10%? Okay, well, maybe the damage bird is, is more than I was saying. I don't know. Oh, nice lock. Congrats, dude. I, I really hate speedrunning. I do not like speedrunning at all. I did do some speedrunning bounties at the start of the, like, kind of when Elden Ring came out. And uh, I just don't like speedrunning. I can be decent at them, I think, but it's just I don't like grinding out runs. It's just not fun for me. I'd much rather... Um, do multiple different runs than just grind out a single one for eternity.
Yeah, and then also, I, I think with speedrunning, you, you, depending on what you're doing, I think you're really limiting how quickly you can get good at a game. Or, or learn more about the game. You no, know, potentially it also doesn't matter. If, if your only goal is to just do some spe category speedrunning, it doesn't matter, but... If I'm trying to get as good at a game as I possibly can, I'm definitely not going to be grinding speedruns, right? That's just a horrible idea. It's almost kind of the same reason why I haven't done any multi-game runs to this point, a little bit. And it's because when you're just running the same kind of any percent over and over again of different games, you're just, you're not really expanding your skill set or your knowledge at all. At least at, at other aspects of the game. And so I much prefer to route runs, get them quickly, which is what I usually do, and then move on to something else. And even this isn't necessarily the best way to get good at a game, but it's it's a lot more fun to do d different stuff than to just grind runs for like even even a week. Even a week of grinding a run for me is that's getting to the point where I don't really want to do it anymore. And I feel like I'm just wasting my time. And there's obviously nothing wrong with doing, like, the multi-game runs and speedrunning and stuff. It's just not what I want to do. Yeah, true. It can teach you game mechanics. And it's the same with a, if you're just doing, like, a, a meta no-hit run. It's the same thing, right? You can, you can quickly learn what you need to know. But outside of that, then you don't learn anything. You can get really good at the route. You can get really good at the game's mechanics, but kind of outside of that route, then you're going to be lacking, probably. Get God Run 3 uh, faster than all boss on Elden Ring. Well, I, I don't know how many attempts all bosses took me for Elden Ring, but I would assume it would be less attempts, probably. I mean, it's a shorter run, which means that in terms of the amount of duration it takes for me to get it, it's probably shorter. There's less stuff for me to learn as well. So yeah, it should be faster. Like, just on, on paper. Endurance is really useful, man. I'm gonna get some. Yeah, exactly. And then, and then the final thing, the reason, the final reason why I don't like speedrunning is because I, I don't like having situations where I do something perfectly and it doesn't work. If I, if I have a perfect run and then I get to a boss and I get bad RNG and I just lose my time, a lot of speedrunning is, is managing that, right? Being able to be consistent enough where even if you do get the bad situations, you can still salvage it. But I'm not interested in grinding RNG for stuff. And that's what I'd want to do, because I'd want to get, like, I would want to get perfect times on stuff. And I, I've done a little bit of speedrunning before, like Dark Souls 3. But, yeah, I kind of didn't do it for very long. So, so yeah, if, if there's, um, if there's, like, a, a short bounty or a speedrunning competition or something, I would be up for that. Because it's not something that I'm going to be spending a long time on. And whoever, it's basically down to whoever can learn the fastest will win it. And I think I'm pretty decent at that. But even the, the bounties that have happened that are a month long, I think it's just too long. That's why I started with a couple days remaining in the bounty, right? It's usually why I do that. Why do I have the helmet on here? Should I should I set up red feather? I guess I will. I'll use red feather. Yeah, no, and no hit runs is, is literally all about negating RNG completely, right? That's why we, yesterday, spent so much time on Gideon, I guess a little bit today as well, and a lot of people were wondering why. 
because the kill looked perfectly fine, but in reality, it, it, it wasn't. There was, there's a small chance that something could have gone wrong, and then I lose the run, and man, there's nothing more painful than having RNG on a no-hit run, and I did do no-hit speed runs on ES3 for a bit, and that was so painful. It was insane, dude. Cause I, I don't even know why I wanted to do it. I, I think it started out, I wanted to, to just prove how fast no hit could be. Because at the time, everyone was like, oh yeah, no hit's so slow. But that is literally the most RNG heavy run that you can like possibly get. And I, I did grind that for a little bit. Okay, so. Sleep. I'm just gonna put this helmet on for Howl. Adam 3 sounds very stressful. Well, I, I mean, it's just a. It's a no hit run, right? shouldn't be any more stressful than any other run I've done. I don't think. Oh wait, don't I rebuff Howl? Should've thought about that. more time I could have gotten like one or two more in there but I just wanted to play it safe yeah I'm not actually certain there if Terra Magica does anything There's no doubt though with with the, like the full source or the full magic damage set up here with the magic scorpion you definitely one cycle him there yeah we almost got him though even still i just i don't i don't think terra magica was the right play but maybe it's just the same because you probably missed out on three hits there I actually, I don't think it's a shame Azure Scorpion's a pain to get. I think sorcery builds do not need to be any stronger. So it should be some decent investment to go pick it up, I think. So I Like, we've done the sorcery only run and this one we're working on. I guess we've routed it without needing that scorpion charm. And just with it, it would be even more stupid than it already is. Yeah, it just takes time. It's not risky and it, it doesn't even take that long five to ten minutes or so I have lost this world and death are you to commit very let my hand
For sure, though, one on all remembrances, like, I will, I do want to do sorcery no-hit all remembrances, and on that, I will probably, I will probably get the magic scorpion, because you got to go past her anyways. Pretty sure sorcery only all remembrance is going to be... It's already been done. I think only one person has done it probably so far. One person I know of, uh, Backflip, used did it. And he didn't even use Comet Azure on anything. But... I don't know. He made it look very simple. What weapon for Elden Ring? I'll probably use the Iron Balls, I think. Or maybe I would even go with some sort of spell setup, right? I could go Incantations if I wanted. Just because they're so strong. Oh yeah, Night Comet for sure used. Pretty sure. But yeah, if I was doing that run, I would, I definitely would use Comet Azure on a boss like Moog. Even though it's, you have so many options with Sorcery, but I, I would use it on Moog. And probably where else could you use it? Can use it on Plasti at all? Maybe. Maybe you can like stun him with Rock Sling and then do it. Because that, that's what uh, Bushido on, on the All Remembrance is no hit run he did. Use Flame of the Red Mains into Comet Azure on a lot of the bosses. So you get a quick stun and then you basically just one shot the boss with the Comet Azure. And so maybe you could do that on Plasti with Rock Sling or something. And then just one shot the boss. Uh, Pyro, thanks for hanging out, dude. Have a good rest of your day. Decided on the order for games in Gondron 3 yet? Not really. All I know is that the last three games will be Elden Ring, Dark Souls 3, and Dark Souls 2. Not in that order necessarily. But those are just the games that I'm by far the most consistent at because I've just played them by far the most. And then probably game four would be Dark Souls 1, but of course that'll change as I start doing the runs again. And I know I, I, I'm I pretty certain when the people who've done those long runs, when they do it, they like to swap around the game so that they don't get like burnt out or something. But I would most likely just do the runs in the order that is the most optimal. For resetting. Okay, so here... Um, dude, did I have... No, okay, never mind. I was thinking Fire Giant I messed up. Hopefully I didn't just throw this too fast. Oh, did I already Golden Battle? Doesn't matter. So this should be a pretty comfortable one cycle, I'd assume. So I'm just going to... That's Tower Magica. Is that a one cycle, though? I'll just go for it. I don't care. Or easily. Yo, Matt, thanks for gifting us up to KC. Thanks, Matt.
Um, I I've played DS one a little bit. I I I did SO one no hit in that game, which I mean <laughs> is not really hard to do. Um, and I also I got a low PB on SO one plus zero. I think. And then also I I didn't do all boss and no hit, but I could very easily do that whenever I go back to it, I guess. Um, I just, I routed it. I got like a one or one or two at PB as usual. And then I moved on to something else. I don't remember what though. But my route for all bosses and no hit in DS1 was maybe, maybe someone's done a faster run at this point, but it was, um, I'm just going to wait this cycle here. It was like on, it was like a 125 or 120 run, which is the fastest route. And we're just gonna get unlucky here. Holy shit, dude. I actually aggroed a bird here last time and I had to fight him. With, uh... I guess that was with the Executioner Sword. How's it going, Chris, by the way? I just realized I actually never tested killing this bird, but it should one-shot him, right? I'm just going to buff just to make sure. I would assume this is a one-shot. Uh, Mad King, thanks for gifting the sub to Chris. Thanks, Mad King. No, I... Well, I didn't stream for a while, right, Valhalla? I, I... In the last, um... Before yesterday's stream, in the last like, two weeks before that, I streamed uh, only a few times. I would have streamed more if the bet was actually live, for sure. But since I already have to do the God Run 3, I I took some extra days off, basically. But I'm pretty sure I would have finished the bet probably to, uh, I don't know. Probably like 10 days ago. Easy for me to say that though. All right, let's get the, uh, Plus 10. Let's get some more endurance and more intelligence. Probably more intelligence at this point, actually. I think I got to... Okay, wait a second. So with... I mean, yeah, let's just go all intelligence, actually. That's good. Dude, the PS5 is on the way. Surely. But no, they're not hard. They're not easy to find still, I'm pretty sure, because I've had some mishaps so far with buying them. They are not easy to find.
Not sure why I did all those buffs so early. Wow, very early uh, phase two there. Why was that so much worse this time? Kind of weird, isn't it? Like last time we killed them before anything even happened at the uh, phase two, but maybe I think it's just because the uh, the bus ran out. It's slightly longer phase one than normal. Yeah, yeah. I think I think just the the bus ran out. I did them did them too early, and also pretty long phase one. Okay, so Gideon, um, definitely need Red Feather here. I think this is good, right? I'm pretty sure I had this amount of intelligence last time. So, so Gideon, we need to use Red Feather. And we just, yeah, we just do two and then four, right? Or is it two and three? It, it doesn't matter. So two, and then you'll turn around buff, and then we just do three. I don't know. Yeah, two and three. Let's go on, Kevin. I drink first, and I guess it doesn't matter. Okay, so he did the rollback this time, but it is fine if he does that. Yeah, it doesn't matter if he does that on this. Sometimes he can stand still and like try to swing at me, but it's just the only thing that's important is that I kill him in in those five hits. If it's any more, then it's actually not safe to do that. Uh, Matt, thanks for going to sub to Hemlocks. Insane. He's catching up, dude. 19 away from the top three. Yeah, so on Elden Beast, we should be able to kill him before Elden Stars comes out with just, just raw damage output. No stun or anything. Yeah, it's pretty insane. There's not many setups that can do that. Endurance is good and mind is good.
Ooh. Okay, so I just need to remember this fight. We probably want just more mind and more endurance, I think. Should be good. Okay, let me just remember, so I can't remember exactly how many attacks I'm supposed to do before Radagon goes away, but it's not that important. And then transition, we vow, drink, and then owl. I guess I actually didn't have to drink there earlier, but. we go. No problem. Easy. Yeah, there's not, like, there's not many things in the game that can do that like that, dude. That can just kill Elden Beast just based on pure damage output like that before, before Elden Stars. Yeah, GG, dude. Nice. Actually, I didn't think we were going to get this run today just because the, the early game was kind of rough, but. Yeah, we just we just had to get past the setup and then no problem. Yeah, so Slicer is insane, dude. It's actually broken. Yeah, two runs left, though, dude. Only two more to go. Well, it's not even, yeah, I, it's not even that the setup was long, necessarily. There's many runs that we've done that had a longer setup. It's actually just that it was a diff really difficult setup. Killing Red Wolf, going into the academy, into sections I've never done any, like, no-hit stuff in before. Uh, yeah, the Avatar fight as well. But yeah, that was nice, dude. Bitter Steel, thanks for the brand new sub. Brand new Prime sub. Thanks, dude. No, I think we're going to call it here, you guys. Um, I actually streamed for longer than I thought I was going to, but yeah, pretty happy that we got